Hello folks, this is a quick little video demonstration on how and what to look for when you go out into the zoo or just draw animals in general. In this video snippet, I'm practicing what I preach at a giraffe reserve and orphanage in Nairobi, Kenya. When I'm out in the field drawing, I generally use a smaller sketchbook. I'm using markers, uh, brush pins, and ballpoint pins on that one. A couple of points as we get started. First, I double the time lapse speed so we can see the process in a short manner. Second, I'm drawing slightly darker so the camera can pick up the drawing marks and the progression of the demo. Generally, I start with an important form like the head as a base and then move through the implied movement and rough proportions from the shoulders to the ground. Giraffe has such long and tall proportions, I compare the length of the neck and the legs with the size of the torso to block in a very broad design. One important point that's often overlooked is I make sure the hooves are attached to the ground via the ground plane. So after getting a broad framework worked out, I'll go back in and reinforce some of the angular sections, go back in, hit the gesture a little bit more, build up some of the anatomical points like knees and elbows, uh, ankles, and make sure that everything's kind of working together before I commit a little bit more to the design. I think you see that those two little 30 second, one minute long fountain pen and pen drawings I made make just as good a statement as sitting there for an hour and rendering out your subject. It's good to remember that this lesson is about the greater design and problem solving techniques rather than a step by step method that sometimes becomes a little bit heavy and hard to follow. It's better to know all the tricks to be able to fix your mistakes and troubleshoot what may be going wrong and correct it. I'm using the blue pencil to now pick up some anatomical points. Uh, make sure those little landmarks like the knees and elbows, uh, those little hooves, strangular hooves I'm putting in, all sort of work in tandem. I'm just making light reference to the anatomical landmarks where the skeleton influences surface form. When you look at the diagram to the left, I'm translating the skeleton to tubes, balls, and levers, not what the real bone looks like. That would hamper my design. Before I finish the other drawing, I want to start this new one over here so you can see them being built up in tandem. I'm going to be doing a front, back, and side view, and I'm using the body of this one, the rear view of this, as a sort of my platform to build the legs off of and to sort of experiment with the gesture and the design uh, to make it a little bit more animated and have a little bit more motion to it. One of the most important parts is since it's sort of in a weird position and the proportions are kind of out of whack, uh, it's to find out the inner core of your drawing first. What I mean by that is there will obviously be mistakes and this first part of the design is just to see how all the pieces work together and if it reads well on the first pass. Uh, that means that again you look at, say, the size of the form, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm using that blue pencil to build up sort of the anatomical pieces. Uh, put some landmarks in, like the front of the face. Uh, get the torso. I uh, just put in a diagram of the uh, front view of the exact same pose that I drew previously. Since the knees and ankles and general joints are a lot more squarish, that's the way I draw them. I block them out a little bit more, so that is later on I can apply the tendons and the forms of the legs. Right now they're just chunky blocks, that way I can see them in all those lines that I'm drawing. Those green lines I'm putting are the ground plane. And normally those wouldn't be in there, you'd just be uh, drawing the animal walking along on whatever surface it's on. But those imaginary green lines help keep it in proportion, make sure that one leg doesn't get shorter than the other. It helps ground it so as the the illusion of the animal moving, it's realistic rather than uh, off-putting. Moving back to the giraffe in profile, I'm going to start to build up the anatomical landmarks a little bit more. So when we put form on it, you'll be able to see how that works in conjunction with the entire design. Perhaps you'll notice that I'm not hammering in the bones with outlines on both sides, but just sort of accenting one side to show the track of it because I know I'm going to be putting form and uh, eventually even texture and markings over the top of it later and I don't want it to have that kind of outline coloring book look to it. I want it to be kind of fresh where I can change, still change my mind and move things around and readjust uh, proportions if need be. 
what I am focusing on are those landmarks, like say the elbows and the knees, and how they reach across the entire form, and certainly the hooves that uh, attach to the ground that are going to be so important to make sure that your little story works well. And what I mean by story is, is that your drawing is going to be made up of a bunch of marks. It's going to be have a certain bit of personality in the head. Again, even if it's just created, you're telling the viewer how this thing operates, how it works and walks and the proportions of it. And that's extremely important to get the viewer involved in your creation. And that will make it more believable and therefore more successful as you put your style into it. At this point, I added a couple of reference diagrams of how I put together the hooves on antelopes and giraffes and animals such as those. I laid in a couple of diagrams of the hooves just so you can see how structurally I put them together with boxes and tubes. And even the hooves have a lot more triangular form rather than uh, soft tissue to them. So at this point, I'm going to start dealing with soft tissue and muscle forms on top of my design. Uh, that way to make the uh, drawing a lot more solid and have a lot more form and solidity to it. If you look closely at the drawing I'm working at and the diagram is coming up, you can see those muscle forms attached to the bone there. It's a very simple shape design. You're not looking at like bubbles and all sorts of like really heavy form. It's relatively flat form on top of that skeletal system. You also may notice that I'm not focusing or concentrating on one certain area, but letting the pencil roam all over the drawing that I'm doing. Again, I'm trying to make all the pieces work together as I add uh, little things like a little base to the neck, uh, punch up the shoulders a little bit more, give it a little bit more angularity, uh, build the leg muscles up, uh, and really kind of look at again when I'm using that black pencil, which again, I'm sort of hitting a little bit uh, harder in the drawing so you can see it. See how that works in relationship to, again, your whole drawing as it's supposedly moving through space. Frequently, I move that pencil on the side, turn it over on its edge. That way, uh, it, you get a broader line, and it sort of delineates a little bit softer tissue. Hopefully, that displays a contrast of the softer, rounded anatomical areas as opposed to the sharper edges of the angular bones and the structure of the skull. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to shut up and do a little bit of sketching. Now that I've taken some time to build the forms up, I've got that diagram on the left-hand side, and you can see me now working on the back legs. The red areas on the diagram display the muscular forms. The green areas are the tendons, which are a lot straighter, and that's what I'm trying to do in the drawing, build it up where you can see the line quality differences between the more rounded forms, uh, the really rounded form of the rib cage, and say the more angular areas uh, in the shoulder blades and back by the pelvis. As we move back to the hooves, you can see the picture of the real hoof of a giraffe and how rounded it is and how I change it. Of course, I'm doing it for artistic reasons because if I make it too soft, it's not going to be able to hold up that body. So in a sense, I put it against a hard surface. I'll be moving up to that head in a little while, but as you look at the body, a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, as I said before, the line quality is a little dark so you can see the actual form buildups. Uh, the other thing about it is is that there would be a little bit more rounded areas in, with the markings in the stomach and in the neck by the time I finished. As I move up the head, a little short word of warning. It's pretty small. It's about the size of my thumb as I'm drawing here, even though it looks large on the screen. And I don't want to put a lot of detail in it. I want it to work with the rest of the general drawing that I've put together, as I would out in the field. If I wanted to do a more concentrated drawing, I would uh, draw it larger on my sketchbook. The main organizing principle when I am putting it together is that diagram on the after left. Very, very structural, very angular. I make sure the top plane and the side planes and all the features have axis lines to kind of keep them in line. Perhaps if you go back about 30 seconds, you'll notice that the structure was much more angular. And what I'm doing is proceeding to kind of sand off the edges, uh, soften up some of the tissue, uh, bring out the large snout, I'll make the muzzle a little bit more rounded and supple. 
but in general just pull the whole thing together and make it match the rest of the drawing. So now let's move on to this uh, next drawing of the giraffe and start to uh, fill it up, uh, make it a lot more solid and a lot more lively. When I'm out in the field, I'm always looking for the differences in the body forms in relationship to motion. So you notice as the giraffe bends its legs, uh, the joints are a lot more angular and the body form is a lot more rounded. It makes for a really nice contrast sometimes. It really energizes the drawing and makes it really unique rather than everything being handled exactly the same, which makes the drawing rather flat and boring. Okay, so watch me punch in the rest of the drawing and see if it works or not. Notice at this point the extreme foreshortening, so I'm really, really punching in uh, the overlaps and the idea of one form bumping in against another. When you get a pose like this, it's really important to use that pelvis that I'm drawing in right now as kind of a hanger that those forms uh, attach to. That way they don't just become bubbles and your form lifeless. They actually have a combination of rounded and more angular forms that you can see. It's basically the form of the muscles and the tendons that are the pulling mechanism. Now that I've jumped on and established the bulk of that back form and the back legs, now I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going up over the top of the scapula and then pulling the neck down and then just simplifying the eyes and the nose and the general head shape with the ears just enough where you can look at them and identify what they're doing and possibly establish the forms and foreshortening. Now I'm moving on to a front view. And you may notice that the uh, photograph that I took on site is pretty static, you know, legs straight up and down, and I want to give it a lot more action. Also, instead of uh, the anatomy really sort of taking over, it's going to be the form. I want to get that breastplate, that front edge of that, uh, those legs there, to really be dominant in that design, and then take the legs and be able to move them backwards. And one of the reasons I can do that is again once again establishing that platform for the pelvis and even get that curvature of the tail in the back. As my eye roves over the top of my subject one of the things I'm really trying to do is accent what I believe sort of the main focal points are whether it's a neck turn whether it's the neck plunging into that plate in the chest um, it might be the legs stretching a little bit more Certainly the balance. I mean, I could spend all day on this drawing. If this animal looks like it's falling over or off kilter, nobody's ever going to believe all the anatomical information I put on the inside. Once again, it's time for the drawing and the whole process to speak for itself. Like in that back view, there's a lot of foreshortening in this, and you can see up on the top of the rib cage, uh, where the shoulder blades are and where the pelvis is, there's these overlaps that, though are angular and sort of uh, sharp right now, that I'm going to end up sort of rounding them off and softening them as I go along. You might see that in the diagram of a previous drawing that I did on the right-hand side, where the form and the muscle takes over, and so there's much more of a fluid kind of design sense uh, from front to back rather than it, than it being very abrupt. I'm coming in with a black colored pencil now because that's going to represent, again, more sort of the finished form and surface uh, markings, uh, certainly accenting more of the anatomical soft and hard tissue. The main objective at this point is to use all those steps in the process to pull your whole design together, uh, to make the viewer look at what you want them to look at, and that is, for me, that front corner of the model uh, where that breastplate is and then accenting that leg and then putting them all together but still get that foreshortening and the twist in the neck that's there.
as I've been building this drawing up, I've sort of made a decision that I want to make the uh, form of the anatomy a little bit more important. So I'm going to come back in, hit a little bit more of the core shadows, which are those sort of secondary lines on the inside, and then sort of build up the muscles, give them a little bit more strength, uh, especially since the leg's going backwards. It's stretching a little bit more, and as it stretches, the lower part gets a little bit thinner and pulls like a rubber band, which means your line gets thinner and even concaves a bit. Uh, makes it look like it's uh, pulling a curve into your design. You might notice I even tweak the perspective a lot, and then even that back leg becomes a little bit on the thinner side, just to push it back in space just a little bit. Also a little bit of a lighter line, that way you get a tiny bit of atmospheric perspective. You can see that on both legs that are in the background. As I might have mentioned before, the nice thing about this technique is you see everything in the round. Therefore, when you give a group of animals and they start moving, you're not freaked out about it, but it becomes a real simple series of problem-solving devices. So in closing, I've written and illustrated a couple animal drawing books that you might be interested to take a look at. Uh, they're on Amazon.com if you desire to purchase them. A lot of the information is done in field sketches from the actual site, and they're very uh, informative, and there's a lot of anatomical and uh, perspective and general drawing information on the inside of them. So I'll leave you with a group of really beautiful giraffes on the Maasai Mara Plain over in Kenya. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And hopefully you'll take a look at the other ones and like and join my channel. Thank you very much. Adios. Bye.